This playthrough is rated T for T. All right, we're back, folks, with the epilogue part of the game. Now, the epilogue is already played, but as you saw, if you watched the last Let's End This, I know this is going to be a long one. It's probably going to be like four or five parts. Didn't expect it to be that long. Almost as bad as the Terminator Resistance one where I started it, thinking I was near the end, and there was like, you know, I played like for another three hours or something like that. So, uh, basically what the, the game has added is it's added new things. So, one, it's added... Well, there were skirmishes before, but now you can... Um, you can do hard skirmishes, and then after you do the hard skirmishes, which are all the enemies have been raised to Paragon, and then you have your own, you have to do whatever specific on a map, which is usually take over a base. And then after you finish these, which I'll show here in a second, that there's uh, there's critical skirmishes where a lot more difficult, and you can't just rush in as you would in the, the previous ones. Um, and then headquarters, some things change here, as I can show right here. When you first, uh, there's two parts of the headquarters. There's one where it's like the, the main, um, the main base, which after halfway through the game it changes to the ship, and then you get to add new stuff. Uh, but one of the new things that you get when you beat the game is the cenotaph, which I guess is the cemetery. I don't know why they didn't call it the cemetery. It's so quiet here. I told myself this would happen. I thought I was ready. I guess you can't know how it feels until you actually lose someone. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I'll never. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I miss miss lit, lit his lips. He said I'll never forget you. The cenotaph, or cenotaph, or kenotaph, or whatever. The names of the fallen comrades will be etched in the cenotaph. Uh, paying a d designated amount of DCT, which is money, lets you recollect on uh, recollect on your memories of the fallen to resurrect them. The amount of DCT necessary to revive a fallen comrade increases with the number of times they've been killed in battle. So Crystal Ward, she dies halfway through the game, right before you get the get the ship. She kind of, I guess she, I mean, she gets initially wounded and then dies on screen while everyone else in Squad F, which is where she's from, dies. But we can, if we want, re, if you really want to play with her character or unlock some extra scenes, you can uh, now uh, honor her memory by bringing her back. So gameplay wise, she's back to be playable. Um, story wise, she stays dead. There's no way to bring them back. Now, this character, Zyga, uh, w this could have been anyone. Now, I'm not sure if you can do that mission without um, using a character. You might have been able to play that mission without an another character joining the team, which I could show you which one. Um, like, this character, the, the, that character who died could have been anyone. Could have been any of the, like, 20 or so characters that joined your team. Okay, time to go. And then there's a little cutscene for... Crystal Ward. I will fight at my commander's side once again. I'm Zyga, Raz's second in command. Don't screw with me or my bro will come beat you down. They act like they've come back from the dead or something like that, even though that's just a gameplay mechanic. Um, other thing that was also added is the infirmary. Is this your first time here? Welcome to the infirmary. Well, we're actually equipped to help with more than just medical affairs. We can provide all kinds of support here. Just remember that we're here to help you, in and out of combat. The Infirmary. Use your renown at the Infirmary to unlock different capabilities. The higher you score in battle, the more renown you will earn. Get higher scores to enable new functions. Yeah, since I did so many skirmishes and everything off screen, I maxed out my renown. Uh, but yeah, you can now unlock all the level caps, because the level cap originally is 20. Uh, for all your classes, but you can raise it to 30, uh, which you'll need it if you want to do the hard mode skirmishes and um, the critical uh, maps as well. Uh, uniform swap, which lets you swap between your summer and winter uniforms in combat, so outside of story, it'll just be like, oh, you want to wear the summer gear during a winter battle? Sure, go ahead. Uh, weapon ranks, it, gi it gives you random... These give you random weapons that the aces can drop, which are rare encounters during a map they'll have a specific name that isn't a boss they'll just be hiding around in certain areas and if you kill them in the map you'll get you get whatever weapon they have but this gets you the grants you the ability to get randomly get more of those weapons um ship upgrade yeah at, at a certain point in the game you can only upgrade your stuff to a certain amount um after you hit the after you upgrade as much as you can then the game says oh well if you use renown you can max it out uh, music, yeah, shows you all the music, and then interlude. This helps you get some extra bonus stuff, uh, which you, this is one, if you care about anything about the in-game content, this is what you want to buy is the interlude, which I'm not going to buy it right now because I've 
Or I have a file where I bought it already. Oh, you're heading out? Well, there's a lot we can do for you here. We hope to see you again. Oh, Karen's the... Every time you... Actually, I think I showed her on screen, but every time you get knocked out and evac, she pops up to heal them. Um, you know, training field, we can train. Command room lets us mess with squad members and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, a few things pop up. Oh, yeah, these preferences change every time you get a new member. Uh, so, a couple of things were added when you beat the game. Um... See, I think you have to do... Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. So this spot, this blank here, because every spot that's blank actually means something can go there. To get that, you need to finish... Um, actually, I probably should... You know what? I'm going to load my old file so I, can, um, so I can show it. So let me go back to the title, because for whatever reason, you can't load a file from that menu. You can only say, which is a little weird, but okay. Uh, but I'll show, basically off screen I did all the skirmishes, I'm not going to show all that, so, I mean, I guess if I was playing a full playthrough I would have, but, uh, okay, so this is the file where I've, I've not, I haven't done everything, because I still wanted, there's some things I still wanted to show, so if you want to unlock that little picture in, in chapter 18, you need to do, um, you need to do through, uh, through the fire, when you finish that one it unlocks that, that picture, and then if you do... I think it's been it's I think it's in, it might be into the woods into the woods unlocks a new character as well called Strot locked or whatever his name is it's supposed to be like scrap metal um, he's basically a Terminator slash Robocop reference um, anyway if you do those um, you can go to I think it's this one. Oh, by the way off screen I finally a rate that battle I did within five turns as opposed to eight when you know what you're doing, you can do it a lot faster. Uh, but yeah, when you uh, do that, when you do through the fire, um, it unlocks this uh, episode right here. What? Brian? And Moof? Sergio? What are you doing? Whatever we can. You're joining the fight? That's crazy! I am the navigator of the Centurion. It's my duty to watch over her, through thick and thin. You're sailors, not foot soldiers. Front line is no place for you. I went through boot camp too, uh, maggot. Or are you calling me a maggot? Uh, no, that, that's not what I meant, but... The Centurions are hard our home we ain't gonna let some hulking tin fish haul her off Andre we're all on the same page a navigator and a radar man are nothing without their ship but as soldiers we can help get the Centurion back please let us join you okay we need all the help we can get all right Let's do it. Hmm. But anyway, as soon as you do that, the, all four members join the team and they do the whole put their hand up and go, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm joining the crew, which is like, why didn't they join us before? I, I, I assume the reason is because it seemed the scene was probably too, like, intense to sit down and say, hey, we got to have five seconds to talk to these guys to join our team, which is, you know, oh, well, whatever. Um, let's see, what else adds... Um, after you beat one of the skirmishes, I think it's one of those, I think it's through, it might be also through Firewell or Into the Woods, one of the early hard skirmishes, uh, you unlock a little, is it, I think it's here, yeah, um, you unlock this little, um, ditty right here, which was a blank before, so let's watch that. best right after a mission. Raz! A Angie? Oh, uh, crap. Okay, uh, well, this is like... Is that a cigarette? Uh, 
Uh, yep. Yep, that, uh, that, yeah, that's a cigarette. It kind of reminds me of home. Huh? Wait, Angie, you can remember stuff now? Just a little. I don't know for sure, but I think my papa smoked too. He'd sit out on the porch and look out over the empty farmland and drink from his bottle. And he'd smell just like this. Oh, uh, sorry. I can put it out. No, it's okay. I actually don't mind the smell. Really? That's weird. I thought women and kids are supposed to hate this stuff. If they didn't, I wouldn't have to sneak around like a thief in the night just to get a smoke. You're not allowed to smoke? Will your captain get mad at you? Uh, not exactly. I just have a friend who doesn't like me smoking. And I don't want him mad at me, so... I told him I quit. Them, aren't you? Well, I mean, I, I, I guess I. You're gonna give up something you like for the sake of someone you love? That's amazing, Raz. You're so cool. Well, I'm only out here because I can't stop doing something I like. Anyway, that's the deal. So, can we just keep this between you and me? Keep Raz's smoking a secret. Okay, it's a secret. I promise. Right, it's a promise. <laughs> oh, and another thing. You can't smoke here anymore. Huh? Why? You said you were okay with it. I'm okay with it, but these sheets are for the sick bay. You can't stink them up. And besides, Pi sometimes comes here to get fresh air. Yeah, fine. I get it. I'll be careful. Hey, wait! H how'd you know it was Kai? You just told me. <laughs> Good luck, Raz! This is adult stuff, damn it! Keep your nose out of it! Now, if you do that mission, uh, or sorry, if you do that little springtime thing, it unlocks uh, Raz's ability to be resurrected through the Cenotaph for memory purposes. So now you can use them for like the final battle and stuff like that. I think shortly after this scene, he confesses to Kai, I think about being in love with her. Okay, anyway, yeah, we've got a, a one blocked uh, scene here we haven't unlocked yet. The other thing we haven't done yet is, um, Let's see this one uh, this is where we actually buy it from the uh, infirmary so um, yeah this helps unlock some bonus stuff for the for the bit so let's watch the, a steamy ceasefire ooh steamy rated T for teen indeed easy rags it's not even meal time oh wait it's later than I thought that's odd it's been hours since Claude left on recon and the other should have been back a long time ago. Oh. You worried too, boy? The lizard's getting pretty bad. I hope they're okay. Yeah, I kind of wish the, the episodes would just kind of play because I was kind of short, but sometimes they'll like tie into each other and just continue on, so I don't know what causes them to stop at certain scenes over others, but anyway. Try again, Marie. Any word from Claude? Nothing. The storm brought all communications down. I knew reconnaissance in this weather was a bad idea. But we couldn't ignore that report. If there's even a chance the enemy is planning an ambush, we really have no choice but to confirm. In these temperatures, even the antifreeze will freeze over. I'm afraid I can't order a search party. 
If they don't return soon, we'll have to depart without them. No. How long will this damn blizzard last? You'd better get back here alive, Claude. Everyone's worried about the man indeed. Well, I mean, he's not quite the captain. Later on, he does become the captain because that captain, um, Morgan or whatever, he gets, like, knocked out or whatever uh, after the ship gets attacked, so... Straight is like fighting against a tide. It's do or die, everyone. Just a little further. We won't make it much longer. This blizzard's got a couple hours left in it. We have to find cover or else. What? Uh. Enemy soldiers, 12 o'clock. Are those the imps laying an ambush for us? No. Judging from the rank and file, Probably a recon team like us. I'd rather not engage in these conditions, but... Whoa. Guess we don't have much choice. Well, it looks like we're going to be fighting some combat here in a steamy ceasefire, but... Uh, or maybe not. I don't know. It just There's like a big, huge block there, so usually that's indicated for combat, but who knows? <laughs> so much for dead eye Kai. You know, I was actually gonna make a comment before Raz said that, but I thought, eh, let's let the story play in and he said it for me. And my grenades are frozen stuck. I can't fire anything. Stay calm. The enemy's just as handicapped as we are. I don't think either side can engage, to be honest. Uh kinda late to get cold feet. Besides, they're just grunts. Leave it to the Invincible Raz! Wait! Can't miss it point blank! Eat lead! Huh? Hey, what the... <laughs> Get a load of this filthy Darkson! His barrel's frozen over! The dumbass! Well, well! Seems Federation gear can't handle the cold. Raz, retreat! <laughs> Too late! You're dead! Huh? Uh, looks like our guns froze over too. <laughs> God damn piece of scrap metal! Ah! Holy crap! He just threw that machine gun one-handed! Those things weigh a ton! Yeah, so what? I've got a heavy machine gun! You think the men of the North will lose to a bunch of pansies who prance around with girls? So what if I'm female, you knuckle-dragging grunt? I am a lieutenant, and more woman than you can handle! If you don't like me looking down on you, then first you'll have to prove you're stronger than me! Crap! We're out of stuff to throw! Then we go for close quarters combat! Oh yeah? Put up your dukes! Now they're throwing punches. Give me a break. That's enough, all of you. Huh? Everyone stop it. What? It was just getting to the good part. I 
take it you're in command here? Yes. Looks like we both got lost scouting the area. Yeah. We're in a real jam, truth be told. The weapons don't work, as you can see, and our winter gear won't last. We were just looking for a place to wait out the blizzard ourselves. Now, we're completely lost. We both need all the help we can get. Agreed. Let's call a ceasefire for now. You know, this kind of, I wonder if this is based off of um, the um, event during World War II where the Germans and... Brit it was either the British Army or the Scottish Army or whatever, and it was... I think it was New Year's Eve or whatever, and just someone had the idea to just call a ceasefire during that time. I think, was it New Year's? No, it was Christmas, sorry. And they both sides agreed to stop fighting, and they just hung out for for Christmas Eve today, I think, or something like that. It's been forever since I read the story. And I forgot what happened to the groups afterwards, if they just went back or if they left the war entirely. I assume they just went back, but they... Um, it's one of those like rare moments of, of humanity, you know, when, in real-time war. You know, sometimes it happens. But, uh, anyway. Oh, yeah, that whole scene was just ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> it's so cold. I can barely shiver. Good. The moment you stop shivering, you die. Stay moving to keep your body heat up. <sighs> I don't need advice from the likes of you. Don't walk over the fresh fallen snow. Step in our tracks to make it easier on you. Don't be stubborn. It's life or death here. Fine. I get our guns crapping out, but shouldn't yours be built for this kind of thing? Look, this is way colder than a normal Imperial winter. And even if our gear worked, we couldn't hit the broadside of a bunker in this blizzard. Excuses, excuses. At least the part about missing is true. <laughs> you couldn't fire a single shot, you filthy Darkson. And who's the bozo who couldn't shoot a Darkson? I envy those clowns. Do they ever run out of steam? How dare he fraternize with the enemy? Emergency or no, the sight of it makes me sick. Does that look like fraternizing to you? What else would you call it? Mm hmm. So this is the real Winter Witch. Yes. I'm surprised you've heard that old folk tale. The blizzard's so cold, our ancestors called it black magic. Pretty terrifying when you think about it. Yeah. And there's two hours to go. How can you tell? Call it a hunch. Got a knack for picking up changes in the weather. But if we hadn't come across you, we'd be dead in the snow. The Winter Witch's latest victims. Just having extra bodies to block the wind is a lifesaver. And by the looks of it, your men took the windward side. I appreciate that. No thanks needed. Chivalry isn't completely dead. I have to say, I'm glad our weapons malfunctioned. This close to outright killing each other. We may have lost our bread and salt, but at least we have our vodka. Huh? Old Imperial saying, like you say in the West, every cloud has a silver lining. Feels strange breaking bread. Moments ago, we were staring down each other's barrels. Guess I'll have to count my blessings. Hmm? Blizzard should be dying down soon. There's one more blessing to count. I guess the things you can know about a person uh, outside of battle if you're not trying to kill each other. By the way, vodka is like one of the few, like drinks that that won't freeze, like because of the co composition or whatever, won't freeze at zero degrees temperature. So that's why in like places like Siberia and stuff like that, it's drunk. It's drunk more than actual water because you know water will freeze, but vodka won't. There's other stuff, but back in the but that's more well known. Uh, 
lizards died down, but I'm still freezing my balls off. Surrounded by so much white, it's hard to tell if we're even moving forward. <laughs> hey, Claude. Why doesn't that area have any snow? Huh, you're right. Those rocks over there aren't covered at all. Oh, could it be? Hmm, what's the matter? I need help over here. Come on, gather round. So, Claude, what's so special about these rocks? Can't you tell? The snow is being melted from beneath. Ah, of course. That means... Do you have any explosives? We have grenades, but the pins are frozen stuck. Let me see them. But sir, we need them in case of an emergency. That's what this is, and it wasn't a question. Hand them over. Uh, yes, sir. Squaddy, take out all the grenades and explosives you have. Riley, set them up to make as big a blast as possible. Um... An explosion won't keep us warm for long. If we want to fire, we need fuel first. Don't worry. Center it on the crevice over there. Please, trust me on this. I don't get what you're going for, but if you insist... I'll wave my magic wand and grant your wish. All right, I'm gonna ignite it. Take cover! Is that... this geothermal groundwater melting the snow? Amazing! Oh, the temperature's perfect! <laughs> yes! Take that, Winter Witch! We're gonna make it! Oh, hell yeah! Without further ado, I'll take first dibs and... Hold it. Huh? Ladies first. Do you really expect me to just sit here and wait? What's wrong with you Federation soldiers? Where's your manners, man? <laughs> this guy couldn't get a girl if his life depended on it. No objections here. Women first. Okay, so first of all, like, if we're going by story implications, then there's only two characters there. Like, the rest of them are guys and only two women there first. Two, it's, a, like, they're freezing to death. I think it's fine if you both get in the hot tub. You don't have to get naked or whatever to do that. And even then, I think you're all grown adults, so you can do that. But, of course, for comedic purposes. And three, you want to be treated equal, but then you want to go first when it comes to, like, this type of situation, isn't it? Sorry, I, it's it's just kind of funny, just 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 the hypocrisy of it all and everything like that. I know it's supposed to be a lighthearted comedic moment. It's just it's just you can't help but like point that out. So anyway, sorry. Continue on. Goddamn imps! I'll take you up on that offer if you'll excuse us, then. I guess I could wait till the episode changed. I'm just like I said. I, I kind of find it funny. Just like, you know, there. Uh, anyway. Freeze! So long as I draw breath, none shall peek. Minerva, aren't you gonna join him? I'm standing watch can't drop our guards around these Imperials after all. Oh, I guess there's technically three ladies story-wise. Sorry, I, I miscounted Minerva for some weird reason. Ah, oh, don't get your panties in a bunch. You wish we were that desperate to see your tits defrosting. Uh, excuse me? So, uh, are all Federation women like this? <laughs> I'd say they're exceptions to the rule. Boy, are they aggressive. Ladies first, my ass. Oh, this guy's a, this guy's a uh, man after my own heart. Seriously, they're rougher and tougher than any man I know. But let me tell you, gals back in the motherland. 
Modesty's actually a virtue for them. Always there for her man, but never overstepping her bounds. Now that's a girl worth fighting for. That kind of reminds me of, uh, well, just the line just kind of reminds me of Mulan. <laughs> chauvinist pigs. The chauvinist pigs who helped you survive this winter thing and led you to this in the first place and gave you the idea for the to blow that up for the hot spring in the first place. But no, they're, they're chauvinist pigs. What did you call us? You're so hung up on your Madonna whore complex, you don't even care that your government is oppressing all its people. Quiet, you harlot! The Empire's traditional values are what keep it prospering. Like you Federation degenerates. Values? Is that what you call violence and oppression? Oh, that's rich coming from a fed. Or are you too busy painting your nails to see what's going on in your own colonies? Come again? Need I remind you who started this war in the first place? It's that murderous tyrant you call an emperor! And here you are trying to lecture me. <laughs> You're beyond help. Oh, would you shut up already? Women shouldn't butt their pretty little heads into politics to begin with. What? This is what happens when females are allowed on the battlefield. Okay, it does. It, it is hard, a little hard to def defend them when they start saying what this, folks. I'll admit. So, so you know, like I said, you can still. Well, it's like what's the what's the saying? It's like you can still, you can still have bad attitudes towards things, and you can still have generally good values in some places. But it's like the human human condition. We're not perfect, and we have our problems, and we can learn and grow from them. But anyway. That's right. A woman's place is at home, a man's at war. I think that was still, I mean, women were in war even during World War II, but there were different positions for it. And I think it wasn't until like r rather recently that women were allowed into combat positions. Uh, I'm trying to remember what war it was. I think it was pretty recent. It was like, you know, like 80s or 90s or something like that. Like it had been a long time before they could um, at that point. But I think at this at this at that point it's like well there's so many different people in the world that's not a big deal because in old times it was the whole you know if all the men died at war you know except for the few there'd be a way to like build up the population after that but because of how like big the world is and how many people live in it it's not so much of an issue and obviously the equal opportunity to die for your country and all that other stuff so so get back to the kitchen and make us a sandwich. <laughs> that that's kind of a funny line. I actually say that as a joke to people, just to mess with them. <laughs> it's almost like they're taunting her on purpose, you know, because she gets super angry easily. Well then, so the bo the bonus is basically your standard TNA TNA um, episode of, of every a lot of games like this always have a TNA episode or some or something referencing pretty close to it. I do like the fact that Kai is just like ho de hum ho de hum, just playing myself, just enjoying it while the others get too too into the moment. She's just like, you know what? I'm here to here to have a bath and get warm. I think I think we're good. You know, that's why Kai's the best. She is, or Lena if you want to go for her actual name. Looks like the blizzard's over. Like you said, two hours on the dot. Impressive. 
kind of funny how they don't have a scene for the guys, you know, like they, them taking a taking a spa bath or whatever. But uh, communications are back up. We're gonna hunker down and wait for evac. Now, if you want equal opportunity sp uh, spa stuff, uh, I think it was Lunar. I think it was the first game had uh, you could have spa scenes for the girls, but you could also there was also a spa for guys as well. So we'll be gone by then. I'd rather not have to shoot you. Huh. Never expected you feds could be so. Not to mention that was one hell of a view. <laughs> <laughs> well, until we meet again. Well, I was kind of surprised too. I like the fact that like, during that cutscene, like Claude's like almost shocked, but Raz is just like leering. You know, you could tell their personalities. He's just like, "Here we go." <laughs> Next time, it'll be on the battlefield. Hey, you. And then they'll all be dead because they're never referenced again. Isn't that sad, folks? Yeah. That rifle. Uh, you a sniper? I assume you are too. I may not look it, but they call me Deadeye. Quite a firearm there. I've never seen camo like that. Thanks. My wife designed it for me. I see. Just like she was supposed to, huh? The virtue of a modest female? Why do you have to do that to, to him? He just mentioned his wife and maybe he has a loving relationship. You just assumed everything just because every other guy is like that. Kai, you're just as bad as uh, Minerva and uh, Riley. I love her. And I'd like to think she did it because she loves me. <laughs> yeah, does that shut you up, Kai? I guess we're both fighting for someone we love. Can't save everyone. All we can do is hold on to the one thing that matters most and protect it with our lives. That's why we have no choice but to fight. My commander told me that one. The one thing that matters most, huh? So if our paths ever cross again, may the best sniper win. Right back at you. See you on the field, Deadeye. You too. Godspeed, friend. Well, the fact that Kai survived to the end, it's assumed that guy died. I mean, that's sad when you think about it, but, uh... Anyway, we get a new sub-episode, um, for that. Um, I think that's under... That might be under Chapter 13. Hold on. Whoops, wrong one. I think it's the other one that's, like, blocked out or whatever. Yep. Maybe it talks about... Yeah, a few extra bonus scenes or whatever, so let's watch those. Say, Riley, you want to go up on the deck with me? Up top? The sun's already gone down. Won't it be cold? Yeah, that's why it's perfect timing. Come on. Wow. This is amazing! Isn't this... That's right. It's an aurora. This is the first time I've ever seen one. I heard they're super rare, even this far north. Don't tell me the aurora talks to you, too. <laughs> you basically have to get lucky to catch one of these. But there weren't any clouds today, and the sky's dark with the new moon out. All the conditions were right, so... So you did predict it. It's incredible. I never thought I'd live to see something like this. This is the first time for me, too. I guess we both got really lucky. Yeah. We've seen all kinds of miracles and good fortune out here. And losses. And bad luck, too. But we made it this far. We got through all that. This is kind of familiar, huh? Like after the Star Child Festival, when we'd all look up at the night sky, together. Yeah. After you left Hoffen, the sky was all I saw for a long time. I made it out here, so... I must have turned my life around somehow. But sometimes... I wonder if I've really changed. <laughs> I forgive you. 
What? I think you have. Changed, I mean. And if it's coming from me, you know it's gotta be true. Right? Yeah. You're right. So, I forgive you. Okay. Thank you, Riley. But you're not off the hook yet. Once this war's over, you're going to help me start up my family's factory again. Of course. <laughs> With pleasure. You sure you're excited about it? You got a whole lifetime of hard work ahead of you, mister. A lifetime? Yep. You'll be working for me until you're an old grandpa. What, did you just propose to Claude or something? Well, I... If that's what you want, then... I'd be happy to. Huh? <laughs> well, I... Uh, I didn't mean anything weird by that. So... Uh, wow, it's really chilly. We should totally head inside. <laughs> Stay a little longer. It's almost ready. I promise you're gonna love it. a lot in the sky my sorrow didn't give me much but I did get this it's not bad as far as presents go right yeah I swear we will live to see Hoffman again we will together yeah together Well, that was a sweet moment. Uh, new mission is bad in Chapter 18. Select the final battle and choose which operation you wish to play. And we get uh, Claude's one of his potentials changes. Um, Aurora Val. Aur Aurora Val. Bombshell. Imperial Fleet. God, we get all this stuff for doing that. But yeah, if you uh, now that um, now that we've done that, um, if we do um, the final battle again, or at least I believe it's. Uh, if I have to... Okay, then we can do hard mode. Now, if we do hard mode, we actually get a little extended um, um, the the true ending of the game. Now, h all hard mode is is that everything is based all the all the uh, um, people and uh, the soldiers and everything. Um, they've been their rank increases from. Um, uh, elites to paragons, which means their stats increase, so that it, basically the battle becomes a lot harder. Um, I'm not going to show that again because I already showed the battle. I just obviously this is just hard mode. So what I'm going to do is off screen. I'm going to do the battle, finish it, hopefully get a rank, and then show you the um, if there's any uh, whatever different stuff happens at the end. I'll show that as well. So uh, I'll see you when I finish the battle. All right, folks, uh, I'm here at the final battle. I was going to skip this and show it just to the end to get the b bonus stuff for the epilogue, but I thought I'd show you a little trick I I figured out while playing this. So we're at turn two right now, and the first turn of this, this fight, um, the only thing you really need to worry about is getting Kai or whoever your sniper is to take out the um, Grenadier. There's a Grenadier, I think it's um, right like around here somewhere. Have her take that out and then leave everyone else wherever they are, whoever you got, and make sure you have everyone with just CP on their thing there just to generate CP. The other thing to do in turn one is to get the Dan all the way over to here and you know put his back to the uh, um, a rock here so he doesn't get like cannon shot in the back or by a Lancer or something like that. Hopefully at this point you should have maxed out Dan and had like most HP defense uh, put like a bunch of AP on him, a generation as well as maybe HP if you're worried about that. Uh, and then drop off Riley here where that goes onto the story beat where you have to destroy the tank and then get your 
uh, secondary grenadier with the um, with the best uh, armor piercing um, mortar you can get, which is the or grenadier uh, grenade launcher, which is the Elias MA13. You could probably use another one, but I'm using this for the range. Uh, as well as the pure damage. I also equipped it in with the double belt, although I won't need this. You probably could have equipped it in with the large tank shard, which is like plus 20 to armor. Next, you need to... Oh, yeah, uh, and then on turn two, wait for the tank, because the tank will always pop up here on turn two, and then just hopefully... Um, really, it doesn't matter if any of your guys get killed during the, the turn one enemy turn, although if you do things right, almost nothing should happen to you. They're just kind of building up to attack you as long as you don't move. And then the beginning of turn two, make sure to, well, obviously make sure your Grenadier was out during turn one, but go to the orders and make sure to use attack weak spot and uh, blast boost on whoever your Grenadier is. And if you've got the, um, if you've got the right weapon in range, oh, and we get a little extra dialogue if we're doing turn the hard oh, mode. I think those holes in the front of the enemy tank are the air valves. We shoot into them maybe we can disable the intakes and keep them from diving good idea miles let's try it out i know i suggested it but how do we hit such a small target miles did you forget squad e has a living legend dead eye cop you heard him i've got this one shot one kill yeah, ignore all that. Uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> so the thing you have to do is get your yeah. If you have the other um, weapon that has like high armor, it won't have the range for it, so you won't be able to do what you need to do. And what you need to do is is aim for the base of the main gun here, give or take. And if you have the blast boost, and and, and your grenadier might also get blast boost as well. But if you do this right, watch. Eliminating target. You'll hit every single radiator. I don't know if you'll destroy all the turrets, but you'll hit all the radiators. Now the thing, the, the the thing we're trying to do is we're trying to destroy all these at once, and we just did that with this attack. So if we do this right, we'll basically do this in two turns. It doesn't matter if this is hard mode or easy mode, as long as you do both attack the weak spots and blast, because the blast will extend out of point, or maybe it's because of the way it's pointed out, or maybe it's a glitch, or whatever. Um, ooh, let me even get. Uh, you can use any grenadier for this for the most part. But yeah, if you do this right, all the radiators are, it will be exploded at once. And the game's got to go through every... Because the game doesn't expect this to happen, so it's got to go through all the dialogue. Like, back to back. We already, By the way, we've already seen this, so we can skip his dialogue. I'm just showing you that he's saying it. What? But watch. Okay, so enemy reinforcements reappear. This happens when you destroy a thing. Straight to the next dialogue. Yeah, the game... Uh, I don't... Luckily, the game doesn't glitch at this point. It's just assumed you just destroyed all of them, so it's just going through all the flags or cutoff points to go to the next section here. Uh, more enemy reinforcements. Here's dialogue number three. Uh, this is kind of crazy how you can beat the beat the main boss of the whole game on hard mode in two turns. This is what happens when you play games like this a lot. You just figure out, like, have there been ways in many of these battles to glitch the system? Or maybe not glitch, but... Utilize the system to beat the, the game so fast. Or so, and there you go. We beat it. Two turns. Hard mode. Uh, I mean, I probably should have recorded me showing the actual thing, but it's pretty straightforward. You know. It's quiet. Yep, we sure did. We did stop the tank. <laughs> we didn't even have to do that stupid hit it in the holes thing. It's just another way to... I think in hard mode, I think... Um, thanks to all of you. Now we can go save well, you might be able to... You might be able to destroy the... Um, those rocks or whatever and skip keep it from moving while diving but doing that is supposed to be an extra feature to keep it there because hard mode is supposed to be you know the enemies are going to be yep oh and by the way i get the show you get the trophy for getting a rank in every single battle in the game uh that's counting squad uh squad battles um skirmishes hard medium or hard or sorry regular hard and critical or i think critical is what it's called um and just any of the side stuff or whatever. So yeah, you get you get a trophy for getting A ranks and everything. And I think really the only difference is the final. Um, there's a cutscene after the epilogue. I'm gonna like kind of 
skim through this stuff really quick, but I believe the only thing that's different is the the final um, little bit. I'm afraid to press it and start just to not skip. I think it happens after the credits, but I'll talk about the game again after the credits, even though we've already seen them twice before. Um, yeah, I, I, I put a lot of... <laughs> I was thinking about maybe uh, saying this game back and buying it or something, but for some reason I just kept playing it. Riley afterwards so this game kind of really i mean it was the same with the first game i remember playing that game pretty the first uh valkyria chronicles pretty straight through for the most part um yeah i definitely like this game i'm kind of surprised i stopped playing the second one halfway through i think it's just because the, the way the story was played in that one didn't was because it was just a bunch of mini missions and not really not really a huge overarching plot at least from what i saw maybe it hit that eventually but the point of the game, I was just trying to raise everyone's affinity with the with the main character, so you'd have all their mini missions. Um, because I think, if I remember correctly, in the second game, every character that joins you has a, a mission tied to them. Unlike this game, where they had squad story, so it was like three characters per um, uh, per thing. So they tied multiple characters together in that story, so you weren't having each individual character doing their own thing. Um, which I mean, I guess it makes sense in the second game because the second game is more of a um, school setting type of thing. Um, I think I could probably can skip. Sorry, folks. I, I'm, I'm probably gonna skip like bits and pieces of it because we we've seen a lot of this stuff before. So if I press start at the right times, and even then, I think I can still see the scene even afterwards because most of the scenes you can re re show again afterwards. So I'm just uh, yeah, most of these are familiar. And as far as I know, doing hard mode doesn't. Um, add any scenes in this yeah so like even if you ra use the senate to have to raise like crystal or raz or whoever they stay dead so i like the fact that they can still be playable the game does it to where they can still be used as characters if you want to use them for certain battles if you like like their characters but story-wise it doesn't um it doesn't cheapen that part of it um i know if you've seen this part where he looks at the uh, miller company and then we have the um when we first set out, whatever happened overall I think I think the I think this was still a good game I, I still Unless do have some minor issues with it like storytelling uh, purposes certain character Maybe. traits kind of get annoying you know and stuff like that but that's Maybe usually term for course for certain for the uh, Japanese storytelling but for me uh, but overall I still like this a lot better than a lot of other games and obviously the game does a good job of like having all the characters having different quirks and Through designed differently to stand him out because if it was a realistic war story like a lot of the characters would look look and dress exactly the same you know not that they couldn't be distinguished but you know so um and obviously this game trying to do the whole oh the the imp the federation is just as bad as the empire because they're doing these one things so it it kind of i wouldn't say it falls flat it doesn't fall as well as it could have for that type of story because i mean if you read all the text and all the stuff the federation pretty much just yeah, you know, pretty much just attack the Federation for all that. Oh, here we go. Alright, and that's the true ending of the game, where uh, um, 
where I mean, all it is, you just see a scene with her. I was almost thinking that they were going to do a twist that she ended up being crippled. You know, I think that would have been more of a, you know, the realism of war, but she still survived type of situation. Not that it needed to happen, but anyway, yeah, it shows everyone being, his, his, or Raz being, not Raz, uh, Zyga being alive this time as a, um, it says Crystal War is alive, though technically she's dead, you know, story-wise, anyway, but, uh, um, yeah, I think I still like the first game better overall, because it was the first in the series, and it was just basically about a small country fighting back against this large empire that wanted to take the resources, and it show, it's a story about, like, a, a school teacher, you know, being forced to fight to, to save his homeland, that type of thing. But yeah, the whole empire and federation trying to be evil in their own ways, and I get the the idea of the concept of it, the whole, um, you know, governments can be bad, but the people are good type of thing. But yeah, like I said, it doesn't fall as well as it should. Um, and then, yeah, and then that's it. We've uh, seen everything in the game. That that trophy that popped up is for sure seeing every single event in the game um, up to this point. And then it just shows the... But anyway, um, but yeah, I, I kind of knew ra uh, someone was going to die at some point during the game because that happened. I mean, it's war. Obviously, a character's going to die at some point. But uh, I was having a feeling it was probably good. Before it happened, I was feeling Raz was probably going to be the one to, that died. Um, Headquarters has decorated you with this medal. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks for the medal. All our people died for nothing. No. Um, service medal. These are all the medals you could get from A ranking and finishing the game again. Distinguishing service medal. And we get some accessories. Yep. Yeah, that trophy back there was for getting every single decoration. I think I got every single decoration. Hold on, let's go to headquarters and really quick before we call it. This will be another probably hour long episode. Yeesh. Maybe I should have just made this game a playthrough, although that's what would take it forever. Each episode would have been over an hour long. Just because it. it because I would be like redoing the battle just to get A ranks the first time through. Um, anyway, let's look at the. Oh, yeah, you can play the music. And apparently, the music uh, box unlocks music from the first game as well because it has. It has like the Darks and Racing. It has the Maximilian theme, which was. He was kind of the main, quote unquote, main villain of the first game. Uh, he was the one who's who, who was with the Galleon campaign or whatever. Um, and you go to. And there's a the assist. Statistics. This shows you just how many turns. I could probably do some of these faster, but this is just to like how how many turns it took me to do certain maps. Um, some of them are crazy, like the ones I got in like one turn, one or two turns. Yeah, I got all. You can get a lot of skirmishes in one turn if you know what you're doing or if you have enough uh, CP. Um, you know, fifteen thousand people killed over the course of the game. Here's the decor. Oh, I'm not. I'm, I guess I'm missing a couple. They must be like last standing. Oh, I bet one of them is. Um, one of them is getting every single infantry weapon, which I still need to do. I still need to grind. Basically, I just need to grind money for that one. Um, and then the other one, I think, is probably getting last stand 15 times. Last stand is if you are if you die, you have a chance of activating last stand, which either allows you to inspire troops to get like a stat buff uh, for all the troops surrounding the, the dying player or character, or you can uh, have immunity for... for um, for your turn to finish one more objective before you get knocked down. Um, I think it stacks all, I think it, I don't know if they all have to happen back to back, but I think they have to be tagged on same row. So if you get a last stand and then reload a file, it's not gonna count that to, uh, total, but let's take a look. Um, yeah, this is for getting all the characters to level 30. Um, yeah, this is getting all, maximizing your tanks. Um, uh, cross that. Uh, that's for getting. I think that's beating the game on hard mi or hard mission. The last uh, mission. Uh, best of the battalion. Well, anyway, uh, Federation Grace Heroes. Okay. Well, anyway, I, I think I know. I think I know. I'm missing the weapons because this is the only thing I haven't done in the game. There. Yeah, I haven't read most of the news, but most of the news is like basically like what happens on the front while you're doing what you're doing. And then they talk about the road to peace, uh, like happens right before you destroy the capital. And this just talks about glossary, just talks about all the areas of it, just little snippets of it and who they're about, stuff like that. Um, yeah, you can tell I haven't read any of these. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll probably do it after because I'm not going to go through and do it on screen. Um, and then, yeah, these are just all the different weapons. 
Oh yeah, one of the uh, one of the enemies in the game you're coming across has a crossbow. It's so dumb. You know, typical anime style game. You know, um, yeah, just all the like the fact that they, each of the weapons have slightly different details on it, depending what weapon it is. You know, you know the different tanks. Oh yeah, there's the Vulcan. That one was kind of annoying just because you he, he put his radiator on the top. So you, it, and the Lafayette now a running joke now that I know how to kill him in two turns. Or, well, actually, technically one turn if you look at it like that. Because as soon as he pops up, you know, boom, boom. Or click, click, boom, you know. And there's all the there's all the characters uh, of the game. Obviously, the main characters are basically this section here. And then everyone else is just side, really side characters. Look at the doofy pants. No. Uh, Crystal yeah, died. There's the captain of the ship. Uh, you know, from what I noticed, interesting enough, yeah, the dog Ragnarok, which had like no, he had like, almost no bearing to the plot at all. You'd think he would have just because he's a dog character, but he has a couple of scenes, but that's it. He's just more of a mascot than anything. Uh, Albert Miller. Oh, yeah. Mil uh, Riley's dad. We never see a picture of him. He just dies off screen. Um, yeah, Forsetti, your friend Kai turned villain. Uh, Crimeria, the hottie with the body, except she's a cult ice queen, witch, winter witch. Klaus, kind of like Klaus, he was a silly, silly, evil, not evil uh, antagonist type of character. I mean, the two, uh, I guess they're not really twins. These are the two girls with the crossbows. They're crazy. They're experiments of Belgar. And obviously, spared on him so much that one of them blew themselves up thinking that they were saving him. Renmere, Crimeary is a friend. Curtis, the guy who acts like a um, edgelord, but actually wants to be nice to people, but he can't help it because he's anxious. A little mercenary, yeah, the jokester character, <laughs> the Thomas Kevin who calls himself Odin. Uh, the thing, interesting thing about the game, maybe I missed a reference because in the very first uh, Valkyrie Chronicles, they had a few characters that were from other franchises as like um, troopers that joined your group, uh, as kind of like just like, oh, that's a reference, haha, -ha, you know. Uh, in the first game, it was uh, Skies of Arcadia, but from what I noticed, none of these characters pop up in any other Sega game, so I guess they decide not to do any fun references with the random... Because you think with how many soldiers they popped up... I mean, there might be like one or two characters that maybe are a reference, but I don't recognize any of these characters as being references to any of their game franchises. I think that was a missed opportunity. I mean, why not throw in... Like, I know the game is supposed to be somewhat semi-serious, but it has its goofy moments, so why not throw in like one or two characters from a different franchise as like soldiers, you know... But, I don't know, maybe that was DLC or something like that, so... Oh, yeah, Ben Smith. Uh, yeah, he's kind of funny just because he's... He acts like... He quotes, like, Terminator lines and Robocop lines. Uh, I mean, maybe one of these people are references to another Sega game, but I, it doesn't look like it to me, so... But anyway, that's it for Valkyrie Chronicles 4. One of the longest Let's End This things I've ever done, because this is probably going to be four or five episodes back-to-back, because, -back, you know, I just wanted to show the end of it, but... Uh, like I said, I probably should have just shown the last battle and then called it an episode, but I felt like I had to at least show the, um, uh, just because I like this game, I wanted to show off the, um, the true ending, uh, cinematic or whatever, so, uh, I hope you watch, watch this, I hope, hope you actually watched all five episodes, if not, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have blamed you if you just watched the, uh, ending battle and, and the initial credits version of the game, but, uh, Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. And if I haven't said it before, I definitely, I would definitely think about keeping this game and adding it to your collection, and obviously getting the other games. I think they just remastered the first game not too long ago, and I think you can get it on the PC for those who are not play, don't play on the console versions. Um, I'm not sure about two or three. As far as I know, I think you still have to have a PlayStation Shop or get the actual uh, PSP disc uh, that they were on. Well, except for three, because I never came to America. You'd have to. You had to import it and then um, download, like, a... Because there were some people who worked on a uh, translation for it. I don't know if they ever finished it, but... Anyway, we'll leave it there before I start rambling. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next game.